Hello, my name is Honest Am. I am a healer, a storyteller, a speaker of the truth, and a hip hop pundit. Um, when I say the word hip hop, I do not just mean music. Um, as we know, uh, hip hop culture has transcended and it truly has, um, you know, pretty much just we make this thing called the world uh, move. We create trends, we create um, music and vibes and attitudes and slang. And so when I say hip hop, I mean that when I say hip hop. Um, today I am going to, um, I have a newsletter called Honestly Sis. Um, if you're interested in subscribing, it is a love letter to my 20s. And every, uh, every biweekly, I send out letters uh, that comes from lessons from my uh, 20s or something that I learned about my life. Um, one thing that I have a really good ability to uh, find life lessons in anything. I can find life lessons um, in books. I can find it in TV shows and um, songs, um, celebrity drama. I mean, you name it. I have an ability to look deeper than the surface and to really dig in and to uh, find a lesson that can really help us um, on our journey here in life. Um, and typically, I kind of keep this information within my newsletter, um, but um, I, I I don't know if if you're familiar with it, but currently we're going through a Venus retrograde. Um, and Venus, Venus retrogrades are all around relationships and how we relate to one another. And I really felt that uh, this message that I'm going to share today, um, that is just really um, pertinent with the energy that is going on right now in the world. Um, and I kind of feel obligated to give this, you know, to share this message on a wider range than what I normally would. Um, if you would like to get on my newsletters, you can find that at amberccilman.com, uh, and that is Amber, A-M-B-E-R, the letter C, and then S-I-L-L-M-O-N.com. Um, and if you go to the Honesty Sys tab, you're able to just put in your information and join the um, mailing list. And if you go ahead and become a member of the site, you also will gain access to the archives um, and all that good information. Um, and I also have all that information down at the bottom. So um, before we get started, I kind of just want to do um, a little bit of some housekeeping rules. Um, like I told you, I am a hip hop uh, pundit. I feel like I'm a hip hop historian. And so um, I, <laughs> let me give you my background. I, I grew up in the um, Baptist church. I was born, uh, you know, I was raised as a Christian um, however, as I began to learn more about myself and to learn um, more about my heritage, um, I no longer identify with the Christianity beliefs. Um, and I kind of feel as though religion can be a little bit more um, more segregating um, than it should be. And I think that a lot of the behaviors that happens in the church are uh, very hypocritical to the teachings that are in the Bible. Um, and I also want to talk about a little bit about the Bible and the origin of the Bible and how we all know that the Bible was pretty much collected because of these stories and that Jesus was literally just like you and me. And he was walking around this world and um, he was a healer and he began to do these work and he began to align with himself and he became a great teacher um, of the word and people wrote about him and wrote stories about him and so that's why we have these chapters of John and Paul and they're all just telling these different stories about how he affected their life or what they witnessed him doing. So when I tell these lessons and when I say these things um, you may like roll your eyes or think that it's funny but I really do believe that our musicians are apostles here and I believe that they are here to show us great lessons. And I think that if we look beyond the glam and beyond all the surface level bullshit, um, we can really dig in and get the lessons that we're meant to have. Um, so I'm going to uh, just say again, uh, my name is Honest Am. 
I am a hip hop pundit, a storyteller and speaker of truth. My mission here is to enlighten black and brown people around the world and to remind them of their power. Um, hip hop is my religion and I will deliver my I will deliver my sermons, AKA my lessons centered around lyrical verses. Um, and my first uh, lesson comes from the great apostle Rihanna, chapter eight, um, song number seven. Um, if you guys can please uh, go with me. Uh, if you guys ever, if you go to your title subscription and chapter uh, eight is actually Rihanna's eighth album, Anti. And song seven is, uh, we're going to go to the deluxe version and song seven is Needed Me. And the reading of the word goes like this. Don't get it twisted. You was just another nigga on the hit list trying to fix your inner issues with a bad bitch. Didn't they tell you I was a savage? Fuck your white horse in a carriage. As we read these words out loud, may they not just hit your ears, but permeate your heart. Um, today, the title of this lesson will be Fuck Your White Horse in a Carriage. Please bow your heads for a moment of prayer. <sighs> oh, dear ancestors of hip hop, I come to you today um, as humbly as I know how, and I just ask that you just use me as a vessel today. I ask that you allow me to use the lessons of your great apostles here on earth to spread to the masses so that we may use their daily to use their scandals to better explain ourselves and to rise to a greater occasion. I ask that the spirits of Prince, the spirits of Maya Angelou, the spirits of Nippy Whitney Houston all come upon me and throughout me and deliver and speak words of truth. I ask that the humor of the great Bernie Mac and the love and kindness of Aaliyah just permeate throughout my words and touch the person that may hear this message today. I ask that any of these, any of our great ancestors, our guides, uh, spirits, anyone who feels that you may have something that you would like to share to the masses, please know that I am a willing vessel and I am ready to deliver this message so that us Black people, us Black and brown people around the world may remember our power and take our rightful place in society as kings and queens. Um, just ask that you please just use me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> now, I use this title, Fuck Your White Horse in Your Carriage, not to disrespect the union of marriage, but to evoke a certain attitude that we should all adopt. A certain attitude that we all should adopt. I do not, I, I don't feel, I feel like we're currently in a time where the sexes are divided, um, where we are in a Me Too movement where women are trying to find their voice and by finding their voice, the men are actually becoming lesser beings. And I don't think that that's the right way to go about doing things. I say, fuck your white horse in your carriage, not to disrespect the union of marriage, but to evoke an attitude of change within black and brown women around the world. Since the beginning of the time, uh, women have been taught that we have to become the head of the family. Us black women, we have been taught that we are, have to be the nucleus, the glue, the nurturing hand to keep us, to keep our black families together. Um, we know that it is vital upon our success that that is critical on our success to keep so that our families can move forward um despite everything that has happened to us our um you know despite all the systematic things that have happened to us as black people uh we still as black women have been taught that we are the ones that are responsible for keeping our families together um and striving uh, our great grandmothers, our aunts, our mothers have suffered in silence as men, um, as black men who were unable to take his place in society, took his pain out on his family. And when he wasn't taking his pain out on his family, he was putting ills and evils into his body in the form of drugs and alcohol. And when he wasn't putting his uh, body through turmoil, through drugs and alcohol, then our family, our men was being snatched from us from systematic uh, systems. It, all it takes is a Netflix password and a viewing of the 13 to just know that all the things that have been done against the Black family. And yet still, as Black women, we have been reduced to these roles of being a mother, a wife, a baby mama, 
um, despite everything that has happened, we as women still look at other women and only make them feel vital or make them feel important if they are a mother or if they, not even if they are a mother or if they are a wife, if a man has chosen to give him a ring or make her a, a, a honest woman. That's how we see our work here in society. And I think that us, for us as women, for so long, we have taken this duty to heart and that we, and despite all the disadvantages that we've had, we've decided that we are going to have love no matter how it happens to us, whether it's going to happen, um, you know, if the man is going to be in jail, then I'm just going to hold it down anyway. If the man is going to be cheating on me, then that's okay. It's going to be fine. If the man is beating on me, as long as he doesn't do it in front of the kids, I'm happy. That is how our families has functioned for so many years. And still, and, and it hasn't helped anything working this way. We, we as Black women have always been taught to aspire to marriage. And if we go over to uh, the book of Beyonce, uh, chapter 11, she spoke of this very thing. She said, because I am female, I am expected to aspire a marriage. I'm expected to make my life choices, always keeping in mind that marriage is the most important. We have been asked to lower ourselves for the acceptance of men over and over and over again. However, now we are in a transitional period. Uh, this is where the good news come in that we are in a place where the divine mother earth is asking us to please, please, please remember our place in society. She's asking for us to rise to the occasion so that our families and so that the world may be properly restored. That's why there is so much chaos in our government. There's so much chaos literally in the seas. Like Mother Earth has been tearing some shit up around the world. And it's because we as females have forgotten our rightful place in the world and in society. Um. <clears throat> And the way that this is, the way that our families are restored is not going to happen uh, by, um, you know what, I'm just going to speak because I was trying to look at my notes, but um, we are really at a point where our society, where the universe, where everything is asking us as women to just remember our power. That's why the Me Too movement is going on. Um, that's why we have Donald Trump in office right now. Like all of these things are being placed um, in front of us as challenges so that the divine feminine can wake up and recognize their power. Um, but I feel like where we're getting it wrong as a society is that as us as females, that we climb and get more power and ask for more equality, we're not really asking for equality. We're actually asking for men to shrink themselves. But that's not how this is going to happen. That's not how this how our families are going to be restored. Our families are only going to be restored when we as women walk into our power and we remember who the fuck we are. That's what has to happen. Like we as black women, we have taken so much shit because we have all these studies. We have, um, we literally have our men being pulled out. We have our, the, some of the most successful black men talking about how they wouldn't want to be with a black woman, or we see our men getting married off with women of a different race. And we feel like, you know what, in order for me to have love, in order for me to have my happy ending, then I have to put up with any and everything. And that's just not the case. And that's why I want to go back to the story of Rihanna, because if we think about Rihanna, Rihanna was just like us. Like now all of a sudden, now Rihanna is a savage. Now Rihanna is telling these niggas that she needed her. But if we think about it back in 2005, when she met Chris Brown, she was singing SOS. She wanted somebody to help her. When she was in a relationship with Chris Brown, she was talking about how much she hates that she loves him. And the thing about Rihanna and Chris Brown is what I want us as a society to really think about is that this was the two two very young people first love. And unlike most of us, this this wasn't being played out in the um, classroom. This wasn't being played out in the hallway. This was being played out on a mega stage. And so just like how all of our first relationships had issues with trust, they had issues with communications, they had issues with not being able to control our emotions and our anger, 
instead of this shit just happening, you know, on somebody uh, street corner or this stuff happening in the back hallway of your high school, this happened on a major scale. So we all know how the story of Rihanna and Chris Brown ends on that under on that eventful, horrible Grammy night. Okay, so we all know how the story ends. We know that in the end, Rihanna and um, Chris Brown, that it doesn't work out. They end up having this big blowout. But the thing about Rihanna and why I want people to realize, like, just because she is worth two hundred and six million dollars, um, because she's one of the richest singers of all time, she still was very much so like us. So when she was going through the worst time of her life, literally having pictures of her battered face put on TV screens, instead of using this moment to protect herself, she went back to Chris. She felt in her mom, in her time of need that she was supposed to be there for him, be there for him. And we learned that through a conversation um, through the great uh, Mama Oprah. That, be, that she felt like she had to protect him. Now, isn't that so many of us? So many of us feel that whenever our family members or you know our close friends end up finding out something about our mate, that all of a sudden, that means that we need to protect them because we don't want them to think that this person is a bad person. So we put we, we push down our needs in order to protect someone who's abusing us. And that's not really how we should be going about it, but that's just what we've been conditioned to think for so many years. And so just like us, Rihanna, she, you know, she got away from Chris, but then just like us, she went right back. She literally went right back to him and she tried to do the thing. They tried to re-reconcile. And I bet you nine times out of 10, Rihanna had this moment that we all have of, oh my God, this nigga is not, you know, she goes back into the situation thinking, oh my God, maybe he may change. You know what? Maybe he may stop flirting with these bitches out here. Maybe he may get his shit together because he recognized how amazing of a woman I am. But guess what? She realized that as she's sending petty jabs to his new um, girlfriend and calling her a rice cake, that, oh shit, wait, this is the same shit that I was trying to get away from. This nigga is not dealing with the issues that he has to deal with. He was trying to fix his inner issues with this bad bitch. And she recognized into herself that, you know what? I I don't have to deal with that. That's what we have to realize as women. We don't have to put up with that. Our job as women is not to nurture and to make this man a man. No, he has to do that shit on his own. If he has issues that he has to work on, he has to be man enough to try to deal with them on their own. That's why I want to go to the book of Beyonce chapter... Um, let me just get this right. The book of Beyonce chapter, I gotta find it. Yeah, book of Beyonce chapter, uh, chapter two, book of Beyonce, uh, book of Beyonce two, chapter four, where she knew right off the bat that whatever situation that she was going in, that she was elevating the man, that she was going to upgrade him. In the very first line, she says, I know you are the block, but I'm the lights that keep the streets on. She knew that she was coming into the situation to elevate the man. And that's the same thing that Rihanna went to, because when she went back to Chris Brown thinking that, hey, maybe he may be better, maybe things, can get, you know, maybe things may change, maybe we can old, be, get older and get beyond this. But she recognized that, no, he has not changed. He's not going to get better. He is not beyond these ways. And she recognized that, oh, wait, you know what? This nigga actually needs me. In chapter two, I mean, in the same book, in chapter eight, we see, in the, I mean, in book eight, we see that Rihanna realized that, no, nigga, you need me. I don't need you. And that's what we as Black women have to realize that because we have been so conditioned to aspire to marriage that we're trying to get there by any means necessary, meaning that we will take anything that any nigga does for us. Like, and you know what? And I'm not, let's just speak, you know, let's get Beyonce and Rihanna out of here. I'll speak from my own personal terms. I remember I was in a relationship where this guy, I had a crush on him since I was a kid. And then I finally got with him and I thought that, oh my God, this must mean that we're meant to be together. And this nigga put my, our personal videos on, 
on the internet, on the porn websites. And I thought that, you know what? I was embarrassed, <laughs> so embarrassed. Like I had one of my friends actually tell me that they saw this video. And you know what? I still didn't leave him. I still didn't leave him even after that happened. I continued to mess with him. This man pulled, literally dragged me out of his house. Guess what? I still did not leave him. And I was so conditioned into thinking that this was supposed to be the man for me, that I wasn't looking for these clear red signs that it was time for me to go. It literally took for, for him to get another girl pregnant. Nope, still was messing with him, even though he got another girl pregnant. What was the, the straw that broke the camel's back was that when his when his girlfriend or whatever was in um, labor, about to give birth with his child, he was with me. That was that was literally the breaking point because then it was like, oh wait, shit, what the fuck? Like this nigga will do the same shit to me. He will do the same stuff to me. And that relationship hurt me so bad. I felt like I lost so much of myself from that relationship, and I vowed that I would not get into another relationship until. You know, I said, the next relationship that I get in is going to be with my husband. And I met this guy. I fell in love. He challenged me. I truly believe he's my uh, match for my divine masculine. But guess what? He was not enough. Like, I got him. We fell in love. And I realized that there was still a hole. There was still something inside of me that needed to get fixed. And that's why I want you to realize today, women, I want us to realize that when we decide to deal with a man, despite him disrespecting him, disrespecting us, despite him hurting us, there's something that we feel like we're lacking deep down inside. It's something that we feel that we're not worthy of having fully realized love. And I just want you to know that it's not true. Like, it's just not true. Like, people want to tell you that Black women are complicated and that we're dead. Blah, blah. What the fuck ever? Like, Black women, we're no different than any other race or any other woman. And we deserve love just like every other race and any other woman. And we don't have to do this at these asterisk marks. Like, we don't have to take love any way that it comes. We deserve a man that is going to meet us with where we have to be. And that's why it brings me back to why we have to use the example of Rihanna. Because Rihanna has said plenty of times that she don't need a nigga. Rihanna, Beyonce, they all have recognized who the fuck they are. And that's the thing. That's the thing, babies. Once we recognize who the fuck we are, then we don't put up with anybody bullshit. We don't accept just any old everything because we know who we are, you know? So, and you trying to, you say, hey, Em, how do we get there? How do we recognize who we are? We get there by accepting every single part of us. The nastiness, the, the bitchiness, the parts that we wish that we wouldn't have only then when we accept all of those parts and demand that our partner also accept all of those parts, our relationships, our families, our world will always be fucked up. Because until we stop, until we stop recognizing, until we stop putting labels on, this makes me a good girl, this makes me a bad girl. This makes me a good wife, this makes me a bad wife. Until we stop doing that shit and we say, you know what, I'm going to be in love with you one moment and I'm going to nag your ass the next moment because that's just who the fuck I am. Until we admit that about ourselves, we going to always be fucked up. Our families and our society is always going to be a disarray. And so I say that our key in the in the message for us today is that we need to remember that we have to remember who our who we are. We have to remember our power. And we once we remember our power, we have to challenge the men to meet us at our power. And we have to um, uh, tell them to hold themselves accountable and tell them that we're not about to sit, we're not going to babysit them. We're not going to be their moms. We're not going to teach you how to be a fucking man. We're not going to give you bonus points for taking care of your family. You don't get to talk to me any type of way just because you're rich. No. You don't get to talk to me any type of way just because you are paying the bills and taking care of your family. Nigga, that's your fucking job. You don't get extra points for that. You don't get, you're not going to make, we're not going to sit up here and say Hercules, Hercules, because you are taking care of me. No, baby boo, that's the part of the game because I'm a queen. You are happy. You should be blessed. You should feel honored to even be in the pre be in my pre presence. And Beyonce, book five, she said, nigga, you're not working hard enough. 
You're not loving me hard enough. And that's how we have to approach these men. No, nigga, you don't get the extra point just because you honest to me, nigga. No, that's your job. You don't get these bonus points just because you faithful to me, nigga. No, that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. Only when black women hold black men accountable for being black men, until that happens, our families are not going to be okay. We as people are not going to be okay. For so many years, we have adopted this big mama, big auntie, cousin, sister mentality of, oh, we got to take care of his precious ego and make sure he don't feel bad and make sure he has everything he... No, we are ruining these niggas. We are making these niggas weak. We are making these niggas into bitches. No. Trina said it. In one of in a um in a session with drink chat, she said that women are starting to take the role of men. It is true. Instead of women, instead of niggas going out of their way, doing everything to impress a woman, there's females doing this. Think about it. I did this shit. I can speak of this because I did this myself. How many times have you was like, have you met a guy? You like, you know what? I'm going to suck his dick real good. I'm going to be the freakiest bitch that he can find. I'm going to clean. I'm going to cook. I'm going to do all this. I'm going to show him that I'm the bitch that he's supposed to be with. What the fuck that nigga doing? Like, I, honestly, like, what is he doing while we're trying to go through all of these uh, check marks and, and do all these things because we want to make sure that we come out with a ring at the end of the day? No, like... It's backwards. That's why everything is so fucked up because we have forgotten our place. Like we are queens. We are goddesses. We are empresses. Like we have so much power and we are literally belittling ourselves, lowering ourselves, lessening ourselves, weakening ourselves for the acceptance from men. And guess what? We don't have to do that. You, we think that we are helping men by doing it, but we are actually harming men by doing it. You know? So I just, I say all of that to say that we need to just take the attitude of Rihanna. If Rihanna can walk away from the top, the top R&B singer in the world, the top baseball singer in the world, one of the finest, most eligible actors in the world, a fucking billionaire. Why can't you walk away from that nigga Bobby from Best Buy? Why are you holding on to Tyrone from middle school because y'all because you you y'all promised each other that y'all gonna be together and yeah you know that he done had two or three other kids on you but he's still trying to get his shit together no fuck that those days are over we are no longer making excuses for men who are not trying to get their shit together and ladies let me just do a side caveat if I'm not saying this for the nigga who's literally really trying to get his shit together. Like, if you see your nigga really making steps to trying to change, then you keep supporting that man. That is the definition of a ride or die. The definition of a ride or die is not to repeatedly die to yourself. The definition of a ride or die is to not doing things that are compromising, compromising yourself and betraying yourself and belittling yourself and disrespecting yourself. That's not a ride or die. A ride or die is seeing that a nigga who got shit that he needs to work on and you see that he's trying to work on that shit, but it's taking him just a little bit longer because he got so much shit going on and society's over there so he really ain't got the job and he can't do all this and he cannot afford therapy, but you still gonna be here for that nigga. That's a ride or die. That's the example of a ride or die. But if you done gave this nigga chance after chance after chance and he's still fucking Stephanie and he fucking your cousin and you keep seeing three or four different bitches and this nigga got a different Facebook account, that ain't it, baby. Like, you got to let that nigga go. You have to let it go. And I get it. Like, the pain and the turmoil, like, we put so much, so much in it. Like, we feel like, oh, shit, I've been here for four years. This nigga supposed to marry me? No. No, like if this nigga still having the same, you you still dealing with year one issues in year four, that don't mean y'all supposed to be married. Like, let me just say that again. Like, just because the, the length of time that you're with somebody does not validate that that's time for you to get married. If y'all are not ready, sweetheart, y'all are not ready. If he cannot step up to the occasion, baby, he can't step up. 
So to the women who has given these men chance after chance after chance, and he is still fucking up. And each time he fucks up, you feel like more and you're losing more and more of yourself. You have to let it go because the pain of you, you're holding on because you are afraid to be alone. But let me just tell you, this temporary pain of separation, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. Breakups are not fun. You go, good thing you're going to lose some weight because you can't really eat. You're not going to be fucked up. Like, so you going to lose some weight. You going to look good. But let me tell you that pain of letting the nigga that's not supposed to be what you go is so temporary. It's so small compared to the vastness of the love that you're going to get when you get the person that's for you. Like, it's going to be so beautiful. Like, when you really get the nigga that is for you. That's why you can't keep trying to lower, like, you know, hide these certain parts of yourselves or or not show him this certain side of yourself because you feel like once he see it, he's not going to get it. You want to show him how ambitious you are because you don't want to scare him away because you don't want him to think that you're a woman that don't know how to take her place as a man. But let me tell you, baby, the place of women and men is fucking equal. 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 Society, this fucking, I mean, the, the, that's why I don't believe in Christianity and all this other stuff because that's bullshit. Like, all that was was just things to condition our bodies and for us to perform certain roles. But women's place in society is not to be a fucking lower than a man. A woman role is to be just as equal as a man. Why do you think God gave us? We are the only thing that can bring life into the world. If men were supposed to be more powerful than women, then them niggas should have been able to plant seeds and grow and let the motherfuckers go out. But guess what? God said, okay, you can't, y'all can't do nothing without the other sex. So that goes to show you that we all equal. Like this, that goes to show you that there's no such thing as the lower sex. Like, it has to be equal. And until we remember, until we remember that we as women, we are here. And in order for us to meet the man that we're supposed to be with, in order, as our great Beyonce say, we be blessed to find our equal, we have to we have to stay here and challenge our nigga to meet us here too. Because only when divine divine feminine and divine masculine energy is balanced is when everything is gonna be in sync. Is when we're all going to be in flow. So I just ask that. We just take on this attitude of fuck your white horse in your carriage. We're not going to deal with any and everything just because we want to get down the aisle, just because we want to have a ring on our finger. We're not going to put up with anything. Now, those days are over. Our society, our families, our world, literally our planet can no longer tolerate that type of superficial bullshit ass relationships like our world is asking us and begging us to please remember who the fuck we are and once we remember who the fuck we are when we remember that we run this that we are gods that we are the ones that make that literally get this shit popping as jay-z says we're gonna always be messed up we're going to always be in decay. We're going to always be in turmoil. So I say again, fuck your white horse in your carriage. Not saying fuck unions, not saying fuck marriage. I'm saying fuck that putting up with anything just because I want to get down the aisle. If you got some shit that you need to work on as a man, I need you to take that time out, do the inner work. Do, you know, call who you need to call, look at the YouTube channels, find you a teacher. Just like as a woman, I found my teacher. Do the work, clean up your shit so that you can get on my level and we can be together. And women, I just say that if, um, you know, if you have a man in your life and you just know in your heart that that's not the person you're supposed to be with, if you just know that you have given it your all and that it's just that like, he just doesn't appreciate you or he makes you feel less than then you have to let it go baby like it i know it hurts it feels uncomfortable but 
you got to let it go. And to women who are out here who are single, be yourself. Stop coming into these things with a representative. Be yourself. Because the, the thing is, if you are going around changing and molding yourself into anything that every single nigga, any nigga you meet wants you to be, who are you going to be at the end of the day? That was me. That was me for so long. I wanted to be in love. I wanted to have a nigga in my life that I was just being whatever these niggas wanted me to be. So much so that I ended up in a job I didn't want to be in, depressed, losing a job I didn't even want, and realizing that I didn't even know who I was because I was so caught up in trying to be who they wanted me to be. Only when we step in our truth, only when we accept both the light and the darkness of ourselves, Will we find happiness? Will we find contentment? Will we find the mate who we're supposed to be with? And that's not saying that it's going to be happy. It's not saying that it's going to be sunshine and roses all the time. But you only going to get real when you display real. Last thing I'm going to say. My teacher, Miriam, she always talks about... Um, she talks about, you know, how we talk about the law of attraction and people are always saying like, oh, well, I'm not attracting my mate. I'm not, this person's not coming into my life. But she always says like, you can't, you can't be trying to attract your mate and you're out here pretending to be somebody else. Because that means that you're not, you're not in your home frequency. Like how's your mate going to find you if you ain't even at home? Like, if you are out here trying to vibe and be somebody else, but you really supposed to be here and your mate is coming here, but you over here, like he, y'all not going to find each other. So it's just best to just be yourself. And another thing is you get, it's like you, you get into these relationships and you put your best representative forth. And then all of a sudden you don't want to be that representative no more. And now he's looking at you like, well, why you ain't sucking my dick like you used to? Why you ain't cleaning like you used to? And now you got to say like, oh, cause I wasn't that bitch anyway. So instead of doing that, why not like just go into the relationship being who we're supposed to be? Why not being like Rihanna and walking away from any guy who who find himself trying to work out his inner issues through us? That's not our job. But if you find somebody who is willing to hold space for you and allow you time to work through your stuff as he takes time to work through his stuff, then do that. But until then, it's fuck your white horse and your carriage. That's it. I hope that you guys are blessed uh, by this uh, word that I give to you guys. Um, I just ask that you just really, um, if you don't, if you didn't get anything from this, I just hope that you just remember that men and women are equal. Um, that until we, men and women, until both men and women step into the truth and take accountability for um, their faults, we're going to always kind of be in disarray. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it sounds, it sounds crazy, but we just got you got to be truthful out here you just got to be yourself um it, it, i don't say it probably don't sound crazy it probably sound cliche but you really do have to be yourself because that's the only way that our families and generational curses are going to be healed so i hope that you guys are blessed um by this first lesson entitled uh the gospel according to riri fuck your white horse in your carriage um if you want to hear some more stuff from me or your you're interested in just reading some of my work, uh, you can always find that at ambercsilman.com uh, backslash honesty sis or at honesty sis on Instagram. Uh, comment below. Um, let me know if you agree, if you feel like this is a good message, if you feel like I was on some bullshit, um, whatever. Uh, I'm going to try to do this um, at least once a month, but I'm really somebody who only wants to uh, move when I'm inspired and I was inspired because uh, Drake I was watching the shop and Drake was just saying how his fantasy would be to get Rihanna 
uh, pregnant and, you know, like he lives happily ever after and blah, blah, blah. And I just thought that that was crazy because Rihanna has clearly made it very well known that he, his declaration of love made her uncomfortable. Still, this nigga is willing to do anything to <laughs> try to get her attention. And so I just felt like it was just a word in that. It's just uh, Rihanna, it, it's just very clear that Rihanna recognized her power. She knows who she is and she's not willing to deal with somebody who's not willing to recognize and do the work to clean up his own shit. So I just think we all can learn from that. Um, so I hope that this is where it is a blessing to you. Um, peace, love, and positive vibes. Namaste. <laughs> I'm honest, I am.